What would you do if I told you I could teach you all the basics of Terraform in this one video? I can teach you what a variable is, what an output is, what a data block is, how to configure your provider. Well, that is exactly what we're going to do. Terraform is one of the most in-demand, high-paying technology skills in the industry at the moment. Terraform is a cloud agnostic infrastructure as code tool that you use to automate the delivery of your cloud resources, whether that is to Azure, AWS or GCP. Terraform is very readable and completely easy to understand. And with even zero experience, I believe most people could be able to pick it up within a couple of weeks. Now, if you already have some basic programming fundamentals, you could probably pick this up in a matter of a week, probably even less. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Now I've configured my Terraform folder here with a main.tf file, an outputs file, a provider file, a terraform.tf vars file, which we may or may not use, and a variable file. We're gonna keep this video very basic and junior to make sure you understand the fundamentals. And going forward, I will create a further video showing you how to create your own modules, which can become more difficult. Now, in order for Terraform to be able to interact with a cloud provider, you need to specify what that provider is. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead with AWS on the region of US East one, and we're gonna be using the version of minimum of five or above. And if you wanna be able to find your provider, just go ahead over to Google and type in Terraform, just put AWS after it straight over and there you go you've got your provider block right there now let's head over to our main.tf file where we're going to configure the bulk of our architecture now for this tutorial specifically we're going to go ahead and create ourselves an aws vpc now as you see there i've just typed in resource and it's expanded into the resource block i've gone for aws vpc which is the resource and then this section here is the name so we're just going to call this the toby vpc now that is the name of the resource within the Terraform configuration and will get saved into the state file. That is not the name that it will be given within AWS. Now a VPC needs a CIDR block, so that's exactly what we're gonna give it. And now we've come to a state where we can create our very first variable. So let's head over to the variable sections and we're gonna call this variable a CIDR block. So CIDR block. We need to specify the value for this CIDR block, which is gonna be a string. And let's just give it 10.0. Four, forward slash 24. Now let's save that file. Go back to our main.tf. We're going to type in var dot cider block. And you just configured your first variable. As simple as that. Easy, right? But there's more to it. So let's carry on. Now let's say we actually want to tag this resource. Now this is a name that it will be given within the AWS console. So let's go ahead and type here tags. We're going to go ahead and type name equals now. One file that I forgot to mention was a locals.tf file, which is quite similar to a variable. But the way I like to use it is if we are creating a lot of infrastructure and we have a naming convention that you will be following in industry standards, whatever company you work for will have their own naming convention for their architecture. That naming convention is going to be repeatable. So what we're going to want to do is we don't want to type that in every time. You want to be able to use a locals file. So let's go to our Terraform folder and create a new file called locals.tf. We're going to type in locals. We're going to call this locals name suffix and we're going to call this Toby in a string, of course. Now let's go back to our main.tf and go straight over back to the tags. Now the way you define the locals is in a string, and then you put a dollar and then a curly brace and say locals dot name dash suffix. And let's just call the type in a dash VPC. Okay, so now we've created our VPC we're going to want to be able to create a subnet and assign that subnet to the VPC. So we're going to define another resource. We're going to type in AWS and search for subnet. And we're going to name the subnet toby-subnet. And this next part is very important because this is how you associate this subnet with this VPC. So you go ahead and type VPC ID. And then what you need to do is define what that resource is. So as you remember, we called it, we did an AWS underscore VPC. And as you can see, it's already pre-populated in that VPC, so it names it right there. So we can tab that. And whenever you're associating something with another resource, you just need to put dot .id after it. You just go ahead and put dot .id. And there we go. That is how you associate a subnet with a VPC and how you associate resources together. And we are going to need another variable here because this subnet is going to need to have a slider block also. So we'll just call this subnet dash slider. Give it the value, enter in the string, and we'll just go ahead with 10.0.4.0. We can type that incorrectly, forward slash 27. And 
and we go back to our main.tf file, type in cider block var subnet cider. If we want to, we can give that subnet an availability zone. So let's just say it's in US East 1A. Now don't forget again, we want to tag this resource. So we're going to go ahead and type in the name equals create our string for our dollar in curly brace local dot name dash suffix dash subnet. So as you can see, that's how your local becomes repeatable. And it's the same similar situation with variables, how they can become repeatable. So, okay, we've defined a resource, we've created a variable, we've created a local, we've tagged our resources, we've associated a resource with another resource, what's next? So let's jump over to outputs. Now, what are outputs? Now, when Terraform goes off and creates your resources, when you run a Terraform apply, your VPC will be given an ID. Your subnet will be given an ID. Every single resource you create in AWS has its own individual unique ID. And what you can do is you can take that output and assign it to another resource. So for example, right here, we're creating a VPC. Your network is your very first base layer of your architecture. So you're gonna wanna have an output for your VPC ID. The reason for that is when you associate your resources, remember, you can associate your VPC to, let's say, for example, a security group. Now that security group over here, you've got your VPC here. The output goes over to the security group through the module, and that's how it connects. So it's all done through the ID. So let's go ahead and create an output. So we're in our outputs file. You just want to go to output, and we're going to call this one VPC output. Something very basic. And I'll tell you what, we'll give, we'll give this one a description because it actually shows up in the Terraform terminal down here. What we don't want is Terraform just spitting out a bunch of random IDs that we don't know what they are. It's much easier if you define what that is. Now let's recap on what we've just done. We've set up our provider to be able to communicate with AWS through the API and our access key. We've configured a VPC resource and we've created a subnet and associated that subnet with that resource. We've tagged that resource using the locals file. We've shown you how to create variables We've even created an output to output the ID of that resource once it's created. Now, if you want to become a cloud engineer, DevOps engineer, or a platform engineer, you've probably been researching about Terraform, looking up, thinking, oh, okay, this is code. This code looks quite difficult. I have no idea about code. I hope that I showed you that writing Terraform is actually pretty simple. Now, do remember this is very junior level. So if you're coming in as a junior cloud engineer or a junior DevOps engineer, you're not going to be expected to know much more fur from the past this. There will be some knowledge on how you use it within industry standard, using it, compiling it with source control and Git, but going on and creating big modules that are being used for client architecture that are repeatable. You know, let's just say you work in consulting, you need to know how to create a module. Now on the next episode, we will go through how to create a module and we'll define an entire architecture from scratch using modules, module outputs, data blocks, variables, locals, defining resources, etc. etc. Now I hope that has been helpful and thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos coming soon.